Hi, my name is Ben Plesier and I am a fervent user of Wappler. Unoptimized images not only lead to a bad user experience, they also contribute to traffic congestion. With about 60% of all website traffic coming from people using mobile devices, it is incumbent on the web developer to ensure that all images are fully optimized. Think of the mobile user that has a restricted download limit. In this video I will cover a few ways to optimize your images for the web. As usual, I start with the database. Here I have made a connection to a SQLite database, mainly because this is the easiest when using Wappler in a local environment. But this can be any database of your choice. The name of the database table is, Images. The fields are, ID, Image for the image name, Image index to sort the images and lastly, Image alt which will contain the value of the alt attribute. A lot of developers tend to forget the alt attribute, yet this is an important part of image and search engine optimization. I have populated the database with the images that I will be using. As you can see, I have inserted the name of the image as well as the value for the alt attribute. The assets panel shows the full size images. I have also created a smaller version of the image and placed them in the thumb subfolder. Later on in the video, I will be using the services of ImageKit. This will allow real-time image transformations. There are other options available. I chose ImageKit because of the tolerant free tier. I think that this is sufficient for any small to medium application. I have already stored the images in the media library. The project that I have created is based on the Node.js server model. But this can be any server model of your choice, the principles involved will remain the same. There are two files that are automatically created for a Node project. The first is the main layout page. In this page I have added a navigation bar. I have also added the lightbox component which will be used later on. The second is a content page named, Index. The Index page has been gifted with the bootstrap usuals. Namely a container, row and column. Inside the column is a heading. Before I start on the images, I want to make sure that I start with a pristine foundation. For this I open the index page in a browser. Here I have the developer panel open at Lighthouse. Because I am most concerned about the mobile version, I make sure that it is selected. Then I start the analysis. It is great when we see four green circles. However, this can be improved on. Selecting performance, we see that the CSS needs to be reduced. There are ways to achieve this. But that is a whole other topic. For us, it is possible to eliminate render blocking resources. These are Font Awesome CSS, Bootstrap CSS, Style CSS, Lightbox CSS and AppConnect.js. For the accessibility section, we see that a language attribute is missing. For SEO I need to include a meta description. To minimize the boring parts, I have pre-created an optimized version of the main layout. Here I have added the language attribute. Preloaded app connect JS as script. Added a meaningful title. Add a meta description. A word about deferring CSS. For this I refer to an article on the subject. I will leave a link below for you to read further. For our purpose it is sufficient to note the link. It is suggested that we cater for browsers that have the script turned off. I will ignore this. Our page uses a lot of JavaScript and if it is turned off, our page will not work anyway. Back in the page, we see that I have added the links as suggested in the article. App Connect is loaded as normal. The reason why the following scripts were not considered to block the rendering process is because of the defer attribute. Wappler has automatically added these. A thought. The Wappler team could consider to automatically include the changes that I have made here. Changing the title, and the adding the meta description, should be done using the UI. Back on subject, I have deleted the links to font awesome CSS and style CSS. These are not needed for this project. If they were, then they would have undergone the same treatment as the remaining two CSS files. To see the effect of the changes, I first assign the optimized layout to the index file. In the browser, I refresh the page and follow the same sequence as before for the analysis.
and now we see three of the four sections marked at 100. The only remaining issue is the unused CSS. This gives us a clear path for the rest of the project. Before I further forget to show the API, that collects the data for use in the front end. For this I go to the workflows panel and choose the read function under images. Here we see that the action step is to query the database. There is nothing out of the ordinary for the query. The first page shows the full size images. Here I have added a server connect using the read function. Then there are the usuals for a bootstrap structure. The first row contains the heading. The second row forms a repeat area using the data source as the expression. Then there is an anchor image. The anchor links to the lightbox. The image gets its source and the alt attribute from the repeat area. Note the fluid class and the setting of the width and height of the image. Not including the dimensions will cause a page shift when rendering the page. This is because the browser will not know what space to reserve for the images. A note about the classes that have been assigned to the row. I have used row columns for the number of images across the page. The initial value is 2 which has been assigned to the smallest device. As I select each screen size, you will see the number of columns change accordingly. With the mobile landscape view, I have not set a value. This value will be inherited from the portrait view. Then there is the setting for the gutter margins. Both axes have been assigned a value of 2. Lastly, there is a bottom margin of 4. Loading this page into the browser, I again analyze it in Lighthouse. Here we see that the biggest problem is caused by oversized images. In the network panel, we see that a massive 3 megabytes of data has been downloaded. Even worse, when I view an image in Lightbox, the downloaded data amounts to about 6 megabytes. No wonder Lighthouse is complaining. For the next page, I have chosen to use the thumbnail images to populate the gallery. These images come from the thumbs folder. The rest of the page is as before. Then I load the thumbnails page into the browser and analyze it. This is a huge improvement. We now see the four green circles once again. This time, the suggestion is to preload the LCP image with a high fetch priority. This is so it starts loading with a style sheet. In the network panel, we also see a great improvement. This time the total download is less than 4 megabytes. For this page, I will preload the suggested image. Here I preload with high priority as an image using the thumbnail as the source. I load the page into the browser and repeat the process. Wow! The performance has jumped to 96 from the previous score of 90. The only suggestion that is left, is to serve the images in next generation formats. As expected, there is no change when we view the network panel. In this next page, I retrieve the images from image kit. The preload link is changed and the type set as WebP. The other links undergo the same change but then I realized that I was wasting my time, continuing along this path. We already know that using full-size images are detrimental to the results. On to the next page. The only change from the previous page, was to add a transformation attribute to the link. This transforms the full-size image to an image with a width of 300 pixels. On to the testing phase.
In Lightbox we see that there has been a slight degradation due to a wrong image being preloaded. In the network panel, we see that the original file name is being served as a WebP file, while the protocol has changed to HTTP version 3. The downloaded size has decreased from just under 3 megabytes. All in all, very positive. However, I am still troubled by the fact that the download size still has an MB after it. For desktops this may not be a problem, for mobiles, this is still far too much. For the final page, I want to serve an image size that is related to the size of the user's device. For this, I have added the browser component. Among a heap of other functions, this nifty component does the sniffing out of the client device. This comes in handy when determining the size of the image to present. In the code, I have added a pre-connect to image kit. I have preloaded two of the images as suggested by Lighthouse. Inside the column that contains the images, I have placed four conditional regions. The first region has a condition that the width of the device does not exceed 769 pixels. A second condition is that the pixel ratio is equal to 1. This region serves a small lightbox image as well as a small thumbnail image. The second region has the pixel ratio greater than 1 as the second condition. This region serves the same size lightbox image as above, but a slightly larger thumbnail image. The third region has the condition that the width of the device is between 769 and 992 pixels. This region serves a lightbox image that is slightly smaller than the original image and a thumbnail image that is the same size as above. The last region is for devices that are greater in width than 992 pixels. This region serves a lightbox image that is much larger than the original image while keeping the thumbnail image the same size as above. I am not saying that I have struck the ultimate here. By my reasoning, I have done enough. But then I am an 80% person, meaning that the last 20% takes more effort than it is worth. I have already opened the browser so that I can analyze the final version. This time I select a mobile device as the client. After all, that is what we are interested in. The device is an iPhone 12 Pro, with a device pixel ratio of 3. Lighthouse does not seem to have many complaints. It is great to see the result. In the network panel, we see that we have achieved the result that we wanted. No more megabytes for the mobile version. To wrap it up, I hope that this video has given some food for thought. And that is it. Thank you for watching.